You are now listening to The Spearsy Spin with your host, Mike Spears. Hi folks, and welcome to The Spearsy Spin. You know, there's a whole bunch of stuff always going on, well, when it comes to politics, and, well, that's what we're all about. And one of the things we talked about is trying to take the spin out of what's been spun in the liberal media. Today's no different. There are some folks at MSNBC that say that President Trump may have ties to Russia, but further to that, they're saying that President Trump may have set up a program so that we'll be using all the steel for the new pipelines that we're putting in. These are the oil pipelines uh, that President Trump just approved to begin work on. So I say, I don't think so. Let's get right into it. So do you think President Trump lied about using American steel for the building of the Dakota Access and Keystone pipelines? And again, it seems that no matter you know what you read or you listen to, there's controversy about the Trump administration. The Dakota Access and Keystone Pipelines are, are no exception. And just shortly after President Trump took office, different news outlets began to disseminate information that alluded to the fact that the POTUS had lied to the American people with regard to the use of of uh, the United States using its own steel uh, for the pipeline construction. Now it appears from these various sources that either President Trump or someone from the Trump administration had agreed to buy the steel piping from Russia, thus causing a lot of questions and furthering the egregious investigations into the Trump administration's possible collusion with Russia. But from where did this story of Russian steel come into play? Well, it appears as though MSNBC contributor Joy Reid alluded to a report, supposedly in the publication known as D. Smog Blog, within and within this uh, this interpreted, <laughs> and I use the word interpreted here. Uh, an unvetted news story, the general public via social network, in other words, they watch this on MSNBC, and then you know, the folks sat uh, at their computers and ran with the story and typed it out on Facebook and Twitter and what have you not. So the United States, to complete the two pipelines with Russian steel, was constantly being bantered about. And of course, Whenever you have a story that repeats itself, repeats itself, and gets told differently each time, after enough people hear about it, it almost seems like it's true. Well, anyway, the Smog blog reported that some of the steel used for the KXL was manufactured in Canada by the Russian subsidiary Ivraz. The news agency supposedly continued with a narrative that over 40% of the steel was manufactured in Canada by a Russian-owned uh, business. Now, this Russian, as it was reported, was a friend of President Putin and a friend of Donald Trump. Now, if you put that together, what they're trying to say is that Putin and Trump are friends vis-a-vis -vis the owner of this steel manufacturing company. Anyway, on the 5th of March, uh, 2017, a broadcast from MSNBC with Joy Reid uh, related the, the following information. Well, you got to pay attention here. This is, this is how you, you learn all this stuff. According to reports, the Keystone XL pipeline supposedly would be exempted from President Trump's Buy American rule. And again, this was according to a White House spokesperson. However, we now know that a lot of the steel pipe is being made by a Mumbai-based well-spun corporation right here in the States and by a subsidiary 
of Evraz PLC, which is a Russian company, supposedly. And the plot thickens because it's reported that Ivanka Trump is actually friends with the wife of the owner of the Russian steel plant. This is an awful lot of information for one news agency to, to come out with. And i got to be honest with you, that's the first time I ever heard of uh, this de blogspot, whatever they call themselves. <laughs> but according to the news release, company representatives report that materials for both pipelines were purchased years before Russia was accused of meddling in the presidential election. Now, already it's been reported by social media that a new port in New Jersey, this would be a seaport, has been opened up and already a cargo ship from Russia docked there loaded with steel. Wasn't that convenient? It just happened like that, I guess. But here's where the story becomes suspect. Because in 2012, TransCanada, the folks actually building the Keystone Pipeline, released a presser saying that 50% of the pipeline steel would be manufactured in Arkansas by Wellspun, and 24% would be manufactured in Canada by Evres, a subsidiary of Russian-based Evres PLC. And now this story takes an, a, another twist yet. Terry Kuna, spokesman for TransCanada, has said that all of the pipe for the project has already previously been purchased, and none of it came from Russia. Mr. Kuna went on to say, when we bought the pipe, it was all Canadian, not Russian steel. Meanwhile, Vicky Granado of Energy Transfer Partners said that in the case of the Dakota Access Pipeline, the materials were also already purchased and they had to purchase them that soon because of the manufacturing timeline required. So now we know all the pipeline was purchased since May of 2016. And here's more from a nice lady by the name of Lisa Dillinger, who's also another spokesman for ETS, said that about 40% of the steel was manufactured in Canada and 57% of the pipeline was manufactured in the United States by a company called Stup in Baton Rouge and Wellspun in Little Rock, Arkansas. The remaining pipe was manufactured in Canada. So again, these folks, you know, who are doing the work, who are actually building this thing, are coming out and they're telling you, this is where we bought it, this is when we bought it. So if the piping needed for the oil pipeline had already been purchased, how is it possible for a freighter to bring the steel in from Russia? And according to the International Trade Administration, Russia sells steel to the United States all the time. About 400,000 metric tons of steel a year, as Russia is the world's fourth largest exporter of steel. Thus, a shipment of steel from that country is not cause for suspicion. In the meantime, in 2016, Russia overall exported 22.7 million metric tons of steel, a 4.2% increase from 21.8 million metric tons in 2015. And Russia's exports uh, are about 6.5% of all the steel used globally. Shortly after President Trump signed orders allowing the completion of the pipelines to proceed, the Russian North American subsidiary posted an approving twit, twit, uh, twit, tweet, whatever it is. <laughs> and this is from that Russian company, Evraz NA, North American. And it says in the tweet, applauds the Trump administration for advancing the Keystone XL and Dakota Access pipelines. And again, according to the company representatives building both pipelines, the material for both pipelines was purchased years before the Kremlin was accused of interfering in the 2016 U.S. presidential election. 
So you see, folks, falsehoods can travel halfway around the world before the truth can get its shoes on. Well, we'd like to know what you think of today's show or any of our shows. So please visit us at thespearsyspin.blogspot.com. Thanks for being with us today, folks, and we'll see you tomorrow. Don't miss even one show. Subscribe to The Spearsy Spin now. Click that subscribe button and be sure to also click that bell next to the subscribe button so you'll be notified when we post new videos.